This video is about disposable items like these that contain lithium cells. And if you see these lying discarded in the street and you pick them up, keeping hygiene in mind because these are handled and put in people's mouths and things like that. But if you were to pick it up in a hygienic manner, you can then scavenge cells. And in the early days, the little dinky ones, I've had this one open, you can see, uh, it used to be a little... 250-ish milliamp power cell inside, but for some reason they've got they've got bigger, they've got they've grown up, and now they contain a very useful 500 milliamp power cell or higher. I think this one contains one that's slightly bigger. So let's explore these, and let's talk about them. So I think this may be the most popular one in the UK at the moment. So let's put these other ones out the side. And this kind of thing started because last time I was visiting Glasgow, I saw a yellow one of these just lying on the ground. And after walking past it, I thought, oh, there's one of those disposable things. And I thought, then I, saw, I walked on a bit and thought, oh, I really want to take it to bits, but COVID and all that. But I went back and picked it up like that and carried it home like that, gave it a thorough sterilization when I got into the house and then took it to bits. And here is what I found. It came apart quite easily. Very odd construction. It's got a clear outer shell, which gives it a very deep, glossy look. And it's got an end cap that comes off. Is this going to come off easily? The other one did. Oh no, maybe it won't come, come off easily. It's notable, they say, not refillable. This is not coming off easily. Oh, there we go. Oh, right, okay. So uh, here is the assembly sliding out with, oh, look at that juicy lithium cell. Here's the bit that's not refillable, but here is the odd bit. For a disposable item, uh, this bit here unplugs. And it's a really simple construction. They've got the liquid uh, cartridge here for uh, the glyco-based drug delivery thing. And they've got gold-plated pins. And I guess it's modular so that, you know, whatever flavour it is, they can put the little uh, microphone pressure sensor cartridge in. They can put this universal lithium cell in. And then they can get this pre-filled cartridge, just basically plug them together and uh, slot it into this uh, cartridge and then just put them out. It's designed for mass manufacture. Most of these appear to be made in China. Made and filled in China, I presume. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, take a look at this cell. Actually, I can show you the cell because that's exactly the cell here. 8016. Hold on, let's see if they're the same numbers. 801640. I went on eBay just to find out initially what the capacity of this was rated at. And uh, I found someone selling these online and they openly said, uh, there were some in packs on eBay and they said, recovered from these devices. Um, and I tested it and it, as uh, it came from the discarded unit, because like obviously once it depletes to a certain level, people just throw it away. Uh, it still had a charge in it, but I discharged it and then charged it, and it came up a good, solid 500 milliamp hour capacity. I think that's worth putting to the test for other things. Uh, technically speaking, then, if this is a standard circuitry used in the non-disposable ones, maybe you could charge it via those pins. And as for the refilling, then I guess... Yeah, that's not, you know, it's completely reusable to people like us. I mean, your average person that buys these isn't going to do that. Right, tell you what, let's take another one to bits and see what it's like. I'm interested. I believe this might be the second most popular in the UK. A bit tacky. They've got a, a paper label wrapped around it. Let's uh, see if we can get the end off this. If this is the end that's supposed to come off, it might not be. Oh, it is kind of popping out. Oop, okay. What we got, what we got... Is it a similar construction? All right, okay. Well, there is the the heater. This one is more traditional hardwired, but there's our cell. It says 550 milliamp hour. Now, it's worth mentioning that these cells don't have the protection circuit on them. Uh, on traditional cells, let me see if I can find a traditional cell. Uh, this one. They have a tiny little circuit board on them. And the circuit board has a, a DW01 chip and a MOSFET, dual MOSFET. And the purpose of that board is for those uh, normal rechargeable ones, it's to protect the cell from overcharging. 
um, and also protect it from undercharging because it's going to be reused over and over again. It also protects it from overcurrent because if it detects too much current being drawn, it measures the voltage across the MOSFETs and that uh, if it reaches a certain threshold, it will just cut off into a standby mode until an attempt is made to charge it again, then it, it switches that back off. This is very typical. It's a, what size is this cell, does it say? Uh, HGB13400R. So is that 13 millimeters diameter? Let's bring the calibers in and measure that. 13 millimeters diameter? Let's find out. Uh, about 12 millimeters diameter. Is this zeroed? Yeah. 12 millimeters diameter, about 40 millimeters long. Yeah, about 40 millimeters long. So useful. Very useful. This one, what's the cartridge? I'm cautious about this because, well, it is containing quite strong... I'm not going to finger that because it... But this wicking material could be refilled if you wished. But I have to say, so far, this geek bar thing looks the most refillable. Now, what about these ones? This one feels really solid. Is this a metal case? I'm not going to demonstrate these because that's not what this video is about. This video... It's not about the devices themselves, it's about salvaging the stuff from them. But the market they're aimed at appears to be people who perhaps... Uh, no, let's pop the other end off as well. People who perhaps... Ooh, right, let's push this out. I, I will get round to finishing what I was saying there at some point. People who perhaps uh, are used to traditional packets of the old alternative. So here is, here is, is this a cartridge again? It's a cartridge again, but it lacks the plug. This is just a pure hardwired thing. 500 milliamp power again. 2110, 29. So the lithium cell, is, this gonna, is that the number of this? It's about 8.3 millimetres thick, uh, 17 wide, and about 36 millimetres long. Does that really equate to that? It doesn't really, does it? 80, 18, 40, is that 8 millimetres thick, 18 millimetres wide and 40 long? Hold on. Oh, there we go. 8 millimetres thick, uh, 18 millimetres wide. Yeah, there's there's the number. It's a... Uh, it's, uh, Eight, uh, 80, 18, 40, 500 milliamp power cell. Again, it doesn't really protection circuit because it doesn't need it, because in this case, it's, it's a disposable item. Isn't that outrageous that it's disposable? But I think in this case, it's just the cheapest way to do it. Right, let's continue. What about this thing? I bought these, by the way, just to take to bits, just to assess them for uh, internal gubbins. This one, what's the cell? 3 point symbol, 1.8, is that 1.95? 1.85 watt hour, which is what it says. So this is another 500 milliamp power cell. Uh, this one is 75, 20, 35. Uh, 7.5 millimeter thick? Yeah, roughly. And, uh, good enough. 35, yes. Okay, so if you kind of needed a cell and this system had your circuitry had the protection, this is a viable source. Is this aluminium? No, it's not. It can't be aluminium. I think it's just different plastic. Hmm. No, that is aluminium. No way. Shit. Uh, that is aluminium. What an absolute waste. Let's go all Eve here. Let's go all Eve. Yeah, that's aluminium. Very robust. This one also then probably feels the same. Smock. Uh, right, tell you what, let's get this one open. It's worth mentioning that these things are clearly aimed at the, the traditional users because they're all really high potency. Is this going to come out easily? I'm waiting for one to explode because these are all brand new. And therefore, they may be, the batteries are fully charged in them. Oh, that's something I could check, the battery voltage. But I know pretty well that uh, they will be fully charged. Ew, this is not going out easily. 
not coming out easily. Am I going to have a little inferno on my hands in a moment, taking things to bits? Keep in mind that by the time it's been discarded, it will probably be fairly low capacity. This is not coming out easily. I think this is another aluminium body unit. With the plastic inserted well in, is that trying to pull the battery back in again? Oh, it is. Oh, right, okay. Is the whole lot going to come out the other end then? Let me pop the little sensor thing out. Classic little sensor that you'd find in, well, many types. It's the little one that's based on a pressure sensor that looks a bit like a microphone. Right, tell you what, let's go try and get this one out the other end, see what happens. Something going to happen? Is something going to give? Is it something going to go bang and burst into flames? I don't think so. So that is the wick container. Ugh. Right, tell you what, I'll try pushing it out from this end. Ugh. What have we got? So it's using this aluminium again body, but not as thick as that one. That is chunky. That is a proper extrusion here. Uh, this one's battery. It's got a little pad over here. What is this one labelled as? Is it labelled? Oh, it's kind of labelled, but unfortunately the sticky label is pulling it off. Uh, 500 milliamp hour again. 1.85 watt hour. Uh, what have we got for numbering here? 80, 21, 38... 8 millimeters, 21, yeah, close enough, and about 30, say about 30, yeah, roughly, they, they allow the size of the terminals as well, so there we go, um, how wasteful, but I guess ultimately for that market, it's just what they have, uh, so next time you see one of these lying in the street, just keep in mind, don't walk by, it may have a useful lithium cell in it, now, I want to use one of these. I want to actually do something with one of them. So one thing that comes to mind is this little pattern for red light that I got a while back. Uh, where's a spudger? And uh, it's never worked. And the reason it's never worked is because the lithium cell that was supplied with it is dry. It's obviously had a sort of sealing problem, but uh, the circuit board inside, I already assessed this, are those got the protection board? Oh, yeah, I could use, reuse the protection board, probably. Uh, it does have a charge control chip there, and then the pass infrared chip. So tell you what, I'm going to implant one of these cells into this uh, and see if I can reincarnate this thing. I'm just going to use that little existing circuit board there. It makes sense to do so, doesn't it? Right, one moment, please. That repair has been done. So here's what I did. I took one of the existing cells, the one that I salvaged from, the one I picked up off the street, and I used the existing power control board, the little protection board, and I just tacked those leads onto the pads on the board, making sure of the correct clarity. And the unit is now projecting light forth nicely. So that's fixed. Uh, there was enough stickiness left in the pad at the back to uh, accommodate sticking the cell back in. And I won't click this in at the moment. I can see it is going to fit, but I won't click it in right now because otherwise it's going to make loud popping noises on the camera. But that is it. Now, there's a couple of things worth mentioning. When you open these things, because they've been used hygiene for a start, but also they will still contain the chemicals that are used for people to inhale, the vapour, the fog. Uh, so just be careful because all these things are aimed at the hardcore people and as such this is a fairly potent version. It's got a quite, quite a high percentage of nicotine in it. So just be, if you, it might be wise to use gloves. Also keep in mind that although they're kind of well used, the batteries will still have a charge in them which is quite good. They don't really run them right down to zero in fact. Because they use the standard little chips, uh, they do that thing that when they get low it blinks the LED at the end and says, you know, that's it finished, it's time to recharge. Although obviously you can't recharge it, though you could theoretically be these pins if you applied a current limited 4.2 volt supply. I'm guessing if it's the same chip or just go straight onto the lithium cell itself. But that is it. It's nice that, you know, 
while I'm not really approving of this, I can understand the market it's aimed at. Uh, and certainly they've evolved quite dramatically and they're actually quite useful. And it's just good that, you know, you can just pick up rechargeable lithium cells off the street. Um, this little cell, incidentally, the one that was originally in that, you can see where the seal has failed around one of the electrodes and that's where the electrolyte has just gradually escaped out. So this thing has dried out and is completely dead. Uh, squirting your electrolyte into it is not in the equation. But that is it. Um, rather than see these things go to waste, if you see them in the street, there is the option to pick them up and uh, scavenge them for their juicy lithium cells.